You know, a very senior marketer I once spoke to joked uh, that back in the day, uh, if you asked a bunch of creative professionals, uh, how's the gut feeling? And the response was, hi, sir. Then the creative being discussed was sealed. <laughs> you know, when he spoke, of course, he was talking, he, he knew pretty well how hard you guys worked to make that award-winning idea come true. But having said that, you know, today in advertising, gut feeling, impulse, intuition, has tough competition in data, systems, and numbers. Here with me are some senior leaders from the agency ecosystem who are going to help us uh, understand, decode, why there is a need for an intelligent creative. Hemant, I've known you the longest, so I think I'm going to start with you first. Uh, you know, uh, Hemant is the man behind uh, ADL's winning uh, Share the Load campaign, which has literally won our hearts year after year. Uh, so I want to understand from you, Hemant, in this uh, era of technology, how differently are you taking creative decisions vis-a-vis -vis, uh, what used to happen, say, 10 years ago? Um, I mean, I have a feeling that creative decisions will still be taken the same way as they were earlier. I have a feeling that everything else becomes a tool uh, in the process. Uh, and I think while we're discussing data, right, everything is data. I need the fact that we, we go ahead and sort of look for deep data, but at the fact that something as simple as comment sections on the ads that you put out is data itself, right? I feel the number of times that we've had an inspiration for the next conversation on Share the Load that we're going to have has come up from some of the comments. Um, so starting with that, you know, the fact that... Uh, but yeah, to answer your question, I feel the creative decisions are still made from the heart, I think. But you know, when you're creating a social movement at yeah. the kind of scale that uh, shared the load uh, achieved, uh, I'm sure there is more to it than, you know, my neighbor suffered this problem. So let yeah. me put that out as a campaign. Yeah. So what are the intricacies involved? What, are the what is the detailing that goes into creating a campaign like this? Yeah, and again, again, starting from data again, right? Of course, for a conversation which is so emotionally led and culturally led, you can make a hypothesis of it, uh, but you will need numbers to even make your conviction stronger. And we came across an article at one point in time around the time was uh, that women spend five and a half hours in a day doing household chores versus men spend 19 minutes. And, and that figure and that data in a way was something that led us to this conversation, right? So, uh, uh, and, and the fact that you know, with a, with a campaign like Share the Load, what again happens is that data is not just about facts. I think data also tells you about the sentiment. Um, you also realize from comments, conversations, what's the tone that people are, people are talking about. In a way, it's, it is the conversation of equality and it is a women's movement in a way. But each year, the tone sort of changes. Uh, we know that there was, there was an open conversation at one point, there was an aggressive conversation, there was a heartfelt conversation. Um, and the fact that with each passing year and with each new piece of information that we hear in terms of data, you know where the sentiment is going and how you've got to match up to that sentiment and you've got to sort of live up to that sentiment. So like I was saying, I was telling you the fact that it's actually a cyclical approach in a way. When you said gut, um, the fact that you start with a gut and you look for data to sort of feed into that gut and then that, you know, gut feeling just gets sort of, um, it becomes the evidence for your gut in a way that data. So I think, I think it's that cyclic process in a way. Yeah. I'd like to come to, uh, thanks, thanks, Ahmed, for that. I'd like to come to Ram now. Uh, Ram was at Meta for six years before he joined uh, Malin Lintas as a CCO. You know, today a creative agency needs to make uh, much more than that one TVC. You know, with, with the kind of digital platforms available today, you have to customize your creative for each of them, also based on the customers' moods, uh, the cohorts, everything that's available to you. But today, to what extent is a creative agency just something, someone that's executing the work? You know, you have these digitally driven, digital agencies, we have Manish sitting here, and programmatic agency. Are they telling you that these are these 30 creators I need from you? Why don't you implement it for me? Or is it the reverse? Um, before I answer that, I would just like to take a moment to call out the eclectic hairstyles on this panel. So I think uh, <laughs> it's quite a diverse panel in that way. 
So I was with Meta for six and a half years and uh, my role there was to co-create with creative agencies, which means that every time I worked with, say, uh, Lintas or an Ogilvy, and today I'm at Malan Lintas. So I think the job has remained the same, which is to say the agency owns the idea. The agency comes up with the core idea. So agencies aren't told, listen, you know, do this execution. They actually own the brand because they have enduring relationships with the brand. So how it used to work back in the day with an Ogilvy, for example, they would come up with a core thought, how would we make it platform first would be, you know, my role. So pretty much today, even uh, from this side, that really is the job, which is we own the brand, we own the idea, and we have the enduring relationship with the client. And then we reach out to platforms uh, who, and then work with them closely, uh, depending on, so if it's, for example, a campaign that has a lot of Instagram to it, uh, I happen to know, you know, pretty much all of it. So I can sort of do it um, internally here. But otherwise, we would work, work with, say, a meta there, uh, work with a Google. So we would open external platform partners to sort of riff off your idea and make it more platform first. Uh, but nobody really tells you uh, what to do because the starting point is still uh, the idea and the idea you know, starts with the agency. Yeah. Manish, do you agree? Nobody is telling the creative agency what to do? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yes, I will share my point. So, good afternoon everyone. I think uh, after lunch, we will try and be a little uh, interesting for you guys so that you know, there, is, there is cheer in the room. Uh, so, coming back to the question, uh, I think you started with saying who owns the idea? That was more like the crux. So I would, I would say uh, the boundaries have kind of completely blurred right now. So it's, it's, it's like, you know, you can't, gone are the days where say a certain idea could have come from only a certain so-called mainline agency of sorts, right? You know, now that boundaries has completely blurred. Now you, you are getting ideas from a media agency. Absolutely. You are getting ideas from across, right? You know, PR guys are doing some crazy work on digital, right? So I would... So, uh, you know, from my point of view, I think we have to look what is the client's ask, okay? And can I solve that from a digital point of view? I think that that is, and if the medium is kind of helping you solve that problem, I think it's, it's okay who owns the idea and where it I comes mean, I would, from. I, I would fully agree with you, just to add to what Manish was saying that I was uh, specifically responding to like being told in that way of it. But yes, you know, the boundaries are really blurring. Anyone can come up with the idea and who comes up with the idea really is the owner. And finally, it's the brand that sort of at the end uh, truly, truly owns it and knows what's right. So, uh, like the boundaries are blurring, so we work together and rope in the skill sets that you might not have or the skill sets that you're looking for and then you sort of go and do that. Yeah. I'll, I'll just add one point here. So, uh, so it's, it's not a surprise now that a digital company, I'm not even calling an agency, a digital company is creating TVCs now. So that, that's, it's almost like, you know, it's, it's come full circle. So as long as the client in the delivery is managed, I think we are home. Thank you. Uh, Keegan, I'd like to come to you. Uh, I remember one of your campaigns, uh, Two Bins, uh, Life Wins. I think it was also shared by Rata and Tata. It was a very big Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Uh, when you had shot that hard-hitting video, after you were done with that, were you all also involved with, rega uh, with the populating part of it, with the targeting? Because, uh, you know, as an agency which owns the idea, where does, where does his ownership end and where does the agency's job really stop? So how did you go about that? I'm, I'm really glad you asked me this because this is the question I was expecting to be asked and I was hoping. <clears throat> so, uh, so it's, it's commendable that uh, the promoter, the marketer, the team that's Tata Trust, which is the uh, philanthropic arm of Ratan Tata or the Tata Group. Uh, it, see, these are, so I'm a big fan of being emotional and being human and the most intelligent times are when you're being human and when you're being instinctive. So there was a, there's an interesting story, there was a moment when they insisted that the guys who feel the heart of the idea should be in to deploy the idea. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't really uh, know why they're asking for this. You kind of create something that may be powerful or not, but you just send it over to the media guys, tragically who might not really be part of the nerves and the tears of the idea. <clears throat> so this is a terrific story. We spent two days with the typicalities and the cliches of uh, let's populate this way, let's do this, you know, all the 360 that we call 360, right? 
जो मतलब आधा काम वो प्रोड्यूस कभी होता नहीं है थ्री सिक्सटी इज ओनली लाइक फ्लैट स्टाफ दर एंड इन योर हार्ड डिस्क ऑफ योर कंप्यूटर राइट पीपल स्टिल मेक कोस्टर्स यू नो एक कोलेटरल होता है वेद द चीफ डिजाइन ऑफ द कैंपेन बिकम्स कोस्टर फॉर्म कोस्टर जो ग्लास के नीचे रखते हैं पीपल स्टिल डू दैट इन द सो कॉल ट्रेडिशनल वर्ल्ड सो वी सैट फॉर टू डेज एंड वी थॉट वी वर गेटिंग इट राइट अंटिल वी सेड यू नो दिस इज सीमिंग सो टिपिकल आर वी इज दिस अ टिपिकल कापिट बॉम्ब मल्टीपल बुलेट अप्रोच बट वी हैव इन फाउंड एन एटम टू द बॉम्ब दिस वॉज एन आइडिया दिस वॉज अ फिल्म अबाउट यू नो वॉट हैपन्स टू बी कॉल्ड द अति दलित कम्युनिटी इन इंडिया इट्स दीज आर द गटर क्लीनर्स द फीसीज क्लीनर्स द गाइज गो एंड योर गटर्स एंड you know it was really powerful but could we have gotten it wrong and we were just intuitively feeling we might have gotten the media plan wrong until we realized that uh let's junk all of these ideas there were some 28 ideas let's junk all these ideas let's this the heart of this idea the nature of this film is such that let's get mr tata in let's just do one thing the atom to the bomb was let's get mr tata to tweet it that's it it's over game over let's get ratan tata ji to spread this to kind of you know sort of propagate this and that was the end of it so that's the answer to your question and then it it exploded right the explosion we needed then from my so called facebook i remember getting uh, for my personal facebook some 18000 shares for a film that's something that is quite crazy from my personal facebook so rest is history yeah. like to ask the others uh, you know would you also say that creative agencies have to be involved in the targeting process today and populating the videos as well you know now we are in the age of performance marketing where it doesn't only one creative obviously is not working there are multiple creatives that you have to create so how do you really go about creating that diverse those diverse creatives uh, which can actually reach out to that consumer at the right time can i take a shot at it so first i think the campaign that he has done is i am a die hard fan of that work you know it's it's like whenever you see it and i and i tell my team and you know everybody who is coming into advertising right now say that this is where you go and learn this is where content this is where ideas are you know this is how it is created so i i will take a step back on so there was an ask that was given to them right say that you know i don't need a general content piece you know i need something which which has a soul which will touch people and you don't need a media push to it you know that 18000 share that he's talking about that purely happened because of you know somebody felt something in that gut saying that okay shit this is happening in in our country and is there a is there a way i can solve it yes maybe a one dm one share can do that yes i'm sure media planning and all that will be in place but coming coming back to your question so it depends what Uh, so whenever we create content right like for example in his case he would have defined saying that okay my audience is a lean back audience okay they might have a little more than 2 minutes of time when i create this content so let it put you know so hence a uh, youtube comes first but if i'm doing the same thing for you know the gen z's of of the world so i might have a different approach you know i might tweak that idea and make it into a pledge or something or whatever uh, please don't judge me for the idea right now but or or maybe a filter or something you know which is relevant and platform first then put your might behind okay how how do we populate this idea how do we take it to everybody you know but if if your core is right you know you will get this 18000 or 18 lakhs or whatever irrespective so you know i'd like to come to you amrish uh, you know in your case publicis has uh, spent a lot of money invested majorly uh, in epsilon and uh, sapient I'd like to understand to what extent have these uh, investments really helped the creative uh, agencies in your uh, company? Sure. Uh, see, that's an interesting question, right? Um, and there are probably two parts to that answer. Uh, first of all, I think Sapient and Epsilon are still extremely Western market focused, so they have a very large presence in the India market. Uh, but that's mainly from a talent perspective. Uh, in terms of where uh, the work and the revenues come from a lot of it is focused on the western markets because that's where that level of evolved work is happening what they have done for us is however that we are able to leverage sapient and epsilon the learnings the dna the structures 
and build our local market offering to you know mirror that and bring that to the India market. So therefore, Epsilon is a data centric company. Uh, you see, we've built a very strong offering in India on data. Uh, Sapient is technology focused. That's the entire business that I run for Publicis Group. Now, what it does in terms of creativity, there are two parts to it. One is um, it actually puts us in two businesses. So one part of it is the creative business, which is the advertising industry and everything that we're used to. But it also puts us in the business of you know system integrators and IT companies. So there are a lot of mandates where what we're doing has nothing to do with the creative idea. There are massive mandates which are you know about experience design or system transformation, etc. I won't get into that right now because this is a creative discussion. But for the first part of it, um, having that level of you know uh, data, that level of technology. Uh, brings the intelligence that we've been talking about in this topic. Um, so, if imagination powers ideas like the ones that we just spoke about, right? Uh, intelligence actually can then solve the problem at hand. Um, so, what what these offerings are allowing us to do is one, um, leverage the power of data to do precision targeting at scale. Uh, so, we spoke about how when do creative agencies get involved in targeting? A great example of that, and not from publicists, from uh, another company, is the Cadbury campaign over three different years. Uh, I think I was at Google and Ram was at Meta when the first campaign was conceptualized. So our respective teams partnered with Ogilvy and WaveMaker at that point of time to bring that first pin code targeting campaign alive, which was an Ogilvy idea powered by everyone else. Uh, second is um, personalization at scale, which is the you know Shahrukh Khan campaign you saw last year. But I think now with uh, generative AI coming in, data is also able to do experiences at scale. Now when I say experiences at scale, we recently dropped a campaign where we've done, so for Oreo, the whole tagline for Oreo is say it with Oreo, right? That's a brand idea. Where if you aren't able to come up with something, Oreo will help you come up with it. So we've actually done thousands of responses in the voice and wit of Farhan Akhtar, where he gives advice to people of how to say something. Now that kind of a campaign wasn't possible till a year back. Right? Because uh, if you had to pull off you know, 20,000 responses, 100,000 responses, how many writers can you deploy who will write like Farhan Akhtar? Things. How many you know, recordings will Farhan Akhtar do to put those voices out there? Now we are able to do that. So it's almost like you know, when back in the day, uh, you know, uh, James Cameron thought of Avatar and we didn't have the technology for it. Today we have the technology to do those ideas. So I think that's where it's, it's really coming in. So precision at scale, personalization at scale, and now experiences at scale. That's what we're able to do with this. Wow, interesting. You know, I'd like to bring in Hemant and uh, Ram here. You, know, you both are from an, uh, uh, a network agency, to, so to say. Uh, would you say it is doable for every creative agency, especially even the independent ones, uh, to invest in such uh, massive data undertakings, uh, tech, research, R&D? You know, is it something that is a must-have for a creative agency, doesn't matter which size? And is it something that the clients are really actively demanding from an agency today? That all your decisions are specifically based on numbers and not subjective anymore? I, th I think what's really necessary at this point in time is partnerships and collaborations. And I think, uh, of course, you can keep building in in-house capabilities, uh, but the fact that like how we are saying the idea now doesn't belong to one person anymore. The fact that the idea, you know, like, of course, it starts from an agency and of course starts from the client in that sense. Uh, but the fact that there are more and more avenues for that idea to go. Um, so I think, I think more than in-house capabilities, it is the collaboration and partnerships because I have a feeling that there is such a great potential of, of doing things and I, and I actually somehow feel that maybe some of those in-house things may limit you then sort of set you free in that sense. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think that's the short answer of it. Yeah, if I were to add to that, I would say that uh, more than the in-house capability, of course, which agencies are developing, I think what's really important is a change in mindset. Like agencies have to be a lot more curious now. So you have to be really aware of what's happening in the world and curious about the technologies that exist and the partners that you can sort of collaborate with. So as long as you're curious and as long as you care enough about what's happening in the world around you, because ultimately technology is nothing but, uh, you know, a new canvas to tell old human truths and stories. So as long as you are curious and interested, you will find the right people to collaborate. And uh, yes, some of upskilling is important internally so that, you know, you need to get some of that uh, being there. 
but more than that it's a mindset thing it's about being curious and it's about willing to learn being open enough secure enough to partner and to pass your baby and share your baby with other people and sort of you know bring it to life together yeah and i think also in a way more than just the idea of control and ownership of the idea i think it really is about strengthening the core of that idea right the fact that now it's actually not just one agency and a second agency and the multiple partner agencies that own the ideas actually people who own the idea as well once you put an idea out right now an idea like share the load for example has champions and ambassadors and people who carry that idea forward and beyond the point i don't think you'll be able to create that in house you know the fact the voices of the people will not be able to bring in house but they are actually taking your idea forward which is what becomes extremely important is how strong is the core of your idea that no matter where it goes it doesn't get diluted or dissected in any way but that the core stays as honest and as truthful as you started out to be so yeah so i'd like to actually come to amresh uh, uh, what truly is the roi for a creative agency today then look um, <coughs> i i i think it depends on the objective and what role you're playing um if you're taking end to end ownership of the campaign then you could measure it in uplift in sales and the more traditional metrics but if you're playing a niche role then you can only measure niche metrics so the more ownership a client gives to a particular partner to take end to end views the more you'll be able to deliver roi in terms of end metrics like you know business conversions and sales uh, it also depends on whether a brand is sold digitally or not <laughs> yeah so the the point being i think at the end of the day we've always measured you know some of these through brand lifts and sales conversions there are just digital ways to do it now just just one last question before we move out uh, you know the biggest villain for all creative agencies today is social media outreach is there any way you can actually curb that monster you know once you put that ad out is there any kind of social listening that can kind of keep it in check you know as agencies uh, keegan so i think i'm sure everybody will have a point of view um, so there are two approaches that you know typically brands and agencies can do first is whenever there is an idea that somebody is creating right you you know this will work for a certain section of audience or this might not work for a certain se section of audience you already know that in you know when you're doing your analysis when you're doing a prelim research and all that uh still there is chances that you know that campaign might you know blow up on your face and it might not work so yes the first important thing is uh own up own up in a way saying that okay we have we have done a mistake and if if you plan it well in well in advance maybe there 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 can be a way where uh, you damage control that entire exercise and and then kind of move on so i mean of course sometimes outrage can also be the strategy so if it's the best way to get eyeballs so if that is the case then uh, that's planned outrage in that way but of course a sweet sorry always helps and um, the other thing is you really never know what offends anyone nowadays so i think overall the the thing is that you should be true to what the brand's personality is to the messaging not seek to sort of you know hurt anyone or be outrageous for, just for the heck of being outrageous and as long as you're honest to the idea and to the people you're serving um an apology should work in case you've sort of crossed a boundary keegan i think it was for you originally <laughs> that's cool man <laughs> see i think uh, so outrage right um i think marketers could maybe the time has come for marketers to be a little less paranoid you know i think uh, and especially the network guys let's assume the network guys work with the slightly bigger more tad more powerful marketers so is outrage resulting in pulling out campaigns instantly i think more often than not right uh i think it will be you know double outrage quote and quote for some outrage to happen that starts with courage and bravery which is a sort of a brave campaign should have that as default parameter uh if there is some outrage imagine the double outrage with a marketer or a team of marketers or a brand not taking it out so it's a win win right so there's an interesting example of uh, was it zomato and there was somebody who had a problem with a muslim community a delivery boy and he said is me you know accept nahi karunga iske haathon ka sort of you know khana wagera so i think the so that is just a brand being a, a well meant brand and doing its thing and then the double outrage and the double love of sticking to their stance 
and defending with dignity and articulation. I think that time has come for us to manage outrage and not be outraged by outrage. Yeah. You know, so I think we should, in fact, I just beg and request marketers and all of us to just be braver, more courageous. I'm just worried that, you know, I don't see like, it's a, it's a tad embarrassing that we still the traditional guys and I'm traditional so you call me to mai to bolunga ki you know uh, we still are talking about be stupid yeah india mein be stupid bolne ke liye phatti hai aaj aajkal you know so we got to we can be braver you know there's so i think i'm speaking of tech right are the responses which we call data and we have we are very happy about it are the responses rendering us a soft target Bollywood does not have, you can't sit there with your laptop and have responses while you're watching Rocky Arani ki Prem Kahani while Dharamji and Shabana Azmi are kissing. They are brave. They are looking emancipated and cool and contemporary. They are getting away. Our campaigns are sanitized at word go. We put it out like he's saying correctly, I moved this bottle from year to year. It's offended someone, yeah? Mene Ram ka naam chupa diya, dekho. Hai Rabba. है ना तो मैं क्या बोलता हूं कि वी शुड बी ब्रेव एंड देन बी ब्रेवर बी ऑन दैट एज मार्केटर्स बिकॉज वी आर पॉलिश्ड वी आर वेल मेंट एंड वी हैव द पार ऑफ डिजिटल एजेंसीज मैनेजिंग आर बीइंग आर वर्बल स्टाइलिस्ट एंड मैनेजिंग आर जर्नीज आई थिंक वी शुड कंटिन्यू टू बी दैट पर्सनली सो ऑन दैट नोट यू आर ओपिंग फॉर ब्रेवर क्लाइंट एंड ऑल्सो दैट हैंड शेक बिटवीन क्रिएटिव एंड टेक्नोलॉजी which is hopefully take us on a better course in the days to come thank you so much everyone for all the insights i think it was a lovely discussion thank you thank you Thanks. so much thank you, thank you everyone thank you